Hello everyone and welcome back. Next, what we're gonna learn about these options up here in the middle when you select like a frame or say like a rectangle or a shape like that. So let's jump right in. So I'm gonna select R and now I have the rectangle selected as you can see. And I'm gonna draw a nice square right in the middle of my little frame over here. Let's zoom in. And you have three options. Let's go through them individually. So the first option is edit object. So I've selected edit object and I have a couple of options up here. I have the move tool. I have drawing tools like the pen tool that we saw before and the pencil tool. I also have the bend tool, which will allow me to make some really nice curves. And I have the paint bucket tool. So I really wanna focus on a couple of these tools because you won't be using them all pretty often. But if we use the move tool, we can select like a point on this square and we can move it any which way we want. So in this case, if we move it in, I'm gonna make a little bit of a diamond. So I'm gonna select both points and bring them in little by little. And now I have a diamond. Now, if I wanted to use say something like the bent tool, I can take that and start twisting it any which way I want. I can even make this into a little bit of an oval. Now these are really great for making your own custom icons and we're actually gonna get into this in a later section of the course where we create our very own icons. But just so you can get used to some of these tools, we have it here. So I'm gonna do that for this side too. Not a really nice oval we have going here, but it's gonna work. And we can even select these different points and bring them in. Kind of looks like an egg about to topple over. But you don't need to actually click into here to, to get those options. You can just double click on your shape and those options will appear. So that's to edit your object. The next part, and what I spoke about in the last video, was a component. Now this is one of the most powerful things about Figma and something that you will definitely use if you're on a team. I even use them when I'm doing solo work. Now the difference between using components within a team and by yourself, it depends really on the plan that you're using within Figma. Now, if you're using a free plan, you will only be able to use components within the file. You can't have a component be reused outside of the file. On a professional plan or an organizational plan, you can use components across teams, across files, and across projects. And we're gonna get into how to do that later. But this component little option here just creates a component. Now you'll notice that over here. Now this is really great for interface design if you're creating new things that you need to reuse like buttons, or logos, text, there's different things that you can do and you can recreate. Now, if you see my component right here, there is four little dots. And those four little dots basically signify that this is a master component. So you don't wanna to touch this one. But if you do wanna reuse it, what I would do is I would copy it. So I'm gonna Command C and Command V. Now I have another component, but this is an instance. And what that means is this is another variation of this component. So you can have a file with your main component or a page with your main component, and you can have the instance be reused throughout the rest of the file. In the case of using it within a free plan like we will be using it for this project that we're going to be building. So let's take a look at that. So in the assets panel, I'll see I have local components. And it'll show me which frame it is in. So if I want this is the frame. So if I rename this, I can call this components. And if I go back into my assets section, I'll see that those are where my components live. So I have my rectangle one and it's selected. That's my master component. But I don't have this component there because that is just a copy of this. 
So let's go to a different page. Let's see how we can use this. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go into this frame and I'm gonna go into my assets and I can just drag it over. And there we go, we have an instance. If we go back to my layers, we can see this little diamond shows that I have an instance of it and I can delete it if I want and that component will always be there. Now, if I go back and I go back to that original component, if I delete that, I have no more components. Let's go back and fix that. So there's my component and that's how you create components within Figma. It's really easy, really easy to use across different parts of your app. It's what we're gonna be doing even in like the user flow section, we're gonna be doing it when we're creating our very own components for our design system. It's gonna speed up your workflow. Can you imagine if you have to keep on designing the same button over and over again, when you can just easily go over to the assets panel and just copy and paste it from there. At least they'll all be the same and they'll all be very consistent and your designs will be much more consistent afterwards. It's a great practice to have a component library for whatever file you're working on, especially when you're in the final stages. So we're going to delete this component. Next, I'm going to create a new rectangle. So I collect R and click shift and uh, create a square over here. I'm going to zoom in. So I'm just sliding in. The next option are masks. Now to create a mask, I'm going to copy this. So in case of Apple, I can do option shift and drag, and that will drag a new square. Or you can just do a command C and command V, a copy and paste. It doesn't matter. But we're going to make one of these a mask. So let's select a different color. So I went over to my fill. I'm going to select red, bright, bright red. Now, if I select both of these and I click the mask option right here, you'll notice that one of these is hidden while the other one is showing. Now, if I move over, you'll notice that the rectangle on the left was actually acting as kind of like a window or like a frame into viewing this rectangle. This is great for imagery, or if you want to like hide different shapes. So this is a great way to kind of do that. And if I delete this, it shows again. So let's do that one more time. This time, let's overlay them, use this mask, and rectangle two is now the mask. And now if I move Rectangle three, you'll see that it is being hidden by rectangles too. So really cool way to create masks. But another great thing, so I'm gonna click rectangle again, I'm gonna make another square. You can create, you can use Boolean options here. So these Boolean options or operations are right here. And usually this is when you have two or more shapes available. If I select all of them, I'm just gonna drag my cursor over them. If I select all these, I have union selection, I have subtract selection, intersect, exclude, and I can even flatten these. So if I do union, you'll see that they're all together now. They're one shape. If I double click in here, I can you know, pull them out if I want but they're still a union. Now, if I go back, bring that back in, go back, command Z, I'm commanding Z. Now I have all these shapes again. You can do subtract, you can do intersect, you can do exclude, all these different options. And at the end, if you want to finalize your design, you'll see, like I said before, like you can access these layers underneath and you can fiddle with them if you want. But if you want to access your design, I'm gonna just fix this. Okay, cool, this looks pretty cool. I'm going to actually select it, 
go to my Boolean operations and click flatten selection. And now I can no longer select that, but now I can edit it like it's its own shape. So I can start clicking the move tool, the bend tool if I wanted to, and go in a little bit deeper and do weird stuff like this. This becomes really handy when you're actually using these different types of tools to create stuff like icons. And that's it for the top bar.